Welcome to Engedrian. If this is your first time listening, or even if you are returning, be sure to follow us on Facebook, X, formerly Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube for additional content, battle maps, and background details. We hope you are enjoying our adventure. Let's see what happens next. Welcome back to the world of Angedrian. In this episode, we will provide a mid-season recap of all the action, episode by episode. The last half of the season will begin on September 2nd, 2024, just two weeks away. Please enjoy this rehash while the party stands ready in the crypts under Phila to face whatever else may come out of those sarcophagi. In episode one, we met our seven player characters, Inesel, Theophania, Fodinus, Case, Umgern, Peace, and Malage. If you've played D&D before, you likely immediately recognized what they were by species and class. In case you didn't, here's the answer. Inesel Zalani is a lizard folk druid. Theophania Blackmane is a centaur ranger. Vodinus Oradurk is a bugbear rogue. Case Amberdream is a Leonin fighter. Ungern Luthra is a drow paladin. Piece of the puzzle is a tabaxi monk. And Malaj Ermdal is a fire genasi artificer. In episode two, all seven player characters were united as a loose party, primarily through the leadership of Umgern. We also learned a bit more about each player character, including their home origin. Let's test your memory. Inesel Zalani is from the Great Swamp in the west of Pithilius on the planet of Angedrian. Theophania Blackmane is from the back of the dragon in the middle of Devonmere on the planet Angedrian. Vodinus Oradurk is from Oldestal in the west of Pithilius. Case Amberdream is from the Pride of Jeremond on the savannah of Oreskos in the Plain of Theros, another part of the multiverse. Ungern Luthra is from Zalzil in the Underdark under Pithilius. Piece of the puzzle is a member of the Four Shallows clan of the Everstream and was a student in the House of Silverquill at the Strixhaven School in Orithia on the Plain of Arcavios. In this episode, we also learned more about the dark threat full of stars that roams the city on the eve of a great harvest festival. In episode three, the party faces the nameless Malice in the middle of the festival, but quickly detains her, learning her name is Inacrin Chopira. She escapes and the party, alarmed by a map she was carrying, decides to go and see the king for advice. In episode four, the party face creatures and beasts of the wild with deadly consequences. They also discover a curious intrusion from the Underdark, which needs further investigation. But they eventually make it to the edge of the civilized part of the capital. However, Inesel and Theophania split from the party to go back and explore the eruptions using their forest stealth. In episode 5, the party plans to hide Malage from Inacrin with the disguise acquired by Fodinus, along with some poison for his enemy Mind Flayer. In the capital, Case, Fodinus, and Malage meet with the Elder Council of the Mind Flayer and learn the dark secrets of Varkadar. In Episode 6, Theophania and Inesel map the eruptions, finding many more than they expected, as well as some panthers that had been attacked by something and were mortally wounded. Meanwhile, back in Pithilia, Peace and Umgern have an audience with the king, which leaves Umgern confused and Peace overjoyed. The party begins a few days of downtime activities while they wait for Theophania and Inesel to return. In episode 7, Theophania and Inesel return, and Peace has acquired new trinkets and written more poetry. The party reunite and discuss what to do next and recap all of the threats they think they are facing. Umgern decides to report to the constable to give him the belongings of the king's infantry and the bard, during which time the king sends word that the party is to focus on the Underdark eruptions. Fodinus, having come into much coin through gambling, decides to treat the party to a glorious meal before they return to the eruptions. On the morning of their departure, Fodinus receives a letter that he can't read, but Umgern can. Umgern tells them that it can wait until they get back. The party takes off and enters the first eruption where they are attacked in the Underdark by kobolds. In episode 8, after defeating the kobolds, the party finds the source of the Underdark eruptions, a vile tunneling device manned by the creatures of Centernalfus. They destroy it and collapse the tunnels, intending to visit the Hall of Narvandar to seek help from others to deal with all of the eruptions and the tunnel. In episode 9, on their way to the Hall of Narvandar, the party deals with some hook horrors and then has a run-in with some unfriendly drow. They eventually make it to the hall, where they are a bit overwhelmed. 
After offloading some goods with a very odd gnome named Peter, they split up and explore the wonders of the hall. In episode 10, the party continue their individual exploration of the hall, with Umgren having counsel with an old, bird-surrounded fellow called Hexian. Umgren reunites with Malage and they recruit the help of some drow, in exchange for the hook horror eggs, to assist with closing the tunnels from below and above. They also learn of the multiverse portals within the hall and where they go. Sadly, none of them go directly to Theros or Arcavios. With a plan to close the tunnels from above and below, the party sets off on the surface to take a few days to collapse all of the upper holes. When they get to the last one where the drow are supposed to meet them, they discover evil afoot and must return to the Underdark to deal with it. In episode 11, having rescued the drow and completed the destruction of the eruptions and the underground tunnels, the party return to Pathelia. Umgren insists that the party all go to see the king together to report. The king, delighted with their success, has evaluated the map of Inacrin and found it to be a credible threat. He requests the party to set off in 10 days for the Blight to investigate in one of his newest flying ships. Theophania, Inacel, and Umgern must return to Woodshead before they depart for the Blight. During their downtime, Fodinus learns that the king's infantry remains they found with the spiders was possibly his sister. Malaysia returns to the Mind Flayers to ask about a mysterious person called Aurelia he learned about from Peter and learns her dark history as well as the existence of the most feared five that included Oryx, Kallen, Venera, Felcrin, and Hexion. Peace and Case discuss their disciplines of mind, body, strength, and control. Umgren, Theophania, and Inesel conclude their business in Woodshead. In episode 12, Umgren, Theophania, and Inesel run into some bandits on the way back but put them on the right path. The party reunites in Pathelia and then journeys a bit south to board the Lonely Lady. The ship departs with some of the king's other flying ships, which are separately charged with destroying the remnants of the tunnel that Inesal had a vision of in the Hall of Nirvandar. The Lonely Lady makes it to the edge of Phila and is immediately attacked by air troops assumed to be from Centernalfus. Once defeated, the party begins scouting the northern edge of Phila and finds it lush with life, clean water, and ruins of a lost age. In episode 13, the party spends another day surveying the ruins and fight off some giant sand fleas as well as three large plesiosaurus. With the ruins and area well mapped, Captain Fishdwain drops the bad news that they can only remain one more day before they need to refuel in Pathelia. The party elects between the options of the cavern mines in the east, the points of interest on the surface, and the trap door within one of the buildings, that they will explore the trap door. The party finds an enormous ancient crypt under the trapdoor with an incredibly rich written history but a very dark secret. As they explore some of the bodies to determine the species that dominated this culture, Malaysia removes a necklace and an army of undead attack. Can the party fight off the droves of undead? Can they make it out of the crypt? You'll find out in only two weeks with Engedrian Season 1 returning with Episode 14, The Complicated Next Steps for the Kingdom of Pathelia. Some random notes and thoughts for our listeners as we conclude this episode. Time. As you've likely noticed, time is measured in seconds, minutes, and hours, and there are 24 hours in a day. However, the days are marked off in Quinn days, five of them, and five Quinn days, or 25 days, are one moon turn. There are 16 moon turns in an Isvarana, the year unit of the star Isvara, which means 400 days in an Isvarana. There are four seasons in Pathelia corresponding roughly to winter, spring, summer, and autumn, which last four moon turns each. For a full understanding of the time scale, see the transcript of this episode. Another thing you may have noticed is that the gods, patrons, or deities worshipped or mentioned by the player characters are a hodgepodge of names from across many different realms, ages, and multiverse locations. And Gedrian sits at a multiverse crossroads, one of many, and is a very ancient world with 58,000 Isvarana of written history that's the equivalent of 63,000 Earth years. As masses have come and gone on the planet and through the multiverse gateways, knowledge, traditions, magic, etc. have been passed around, reinterpreted, corrupted, or destroyed entirely. On the player characters themselves. For the sake of learning and demonstration, the seven characters are single class and started at level one. We are using an experience points process for promoting the characters. In many places, we have mentioned how many points the characters received, particularly after battles. However, they are also silently awarded experience points for most of the activities they do, especially when it results in new knowledge, progressing the story, or acquiring new items. 
Lastly, on the monetary system. Using standard coinage and gym values is extremely common in a campaign, but what you may have noticed is that normal labor is poorly paid, but labor or tasks for the king are paid much better. Books are very expensive, and much of the wealth of the kingdom lies in its four libraries filled with books. Because the world is so old, common magic items are not only commonly found, but the population has mastered the production of these magic items. Less common and rare items are hard to find and very expensive. As Drabask said, the world has become dependent on magic, but as such, its commonplace existence means that extraordinary magic is extremely rare, and those who possess it have great power. We hope you've enjoyed this recap of the first half of Season 1. Please stay tuned to our social media for updates, extra content, and maps that help you follow along to the story. Episode 14 debuts on September 2nd. Thank you for visiting Engedrian. Don't forget to find us on Facebook, X, formerly Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube for additional content, battle maps, and background details. We hope you're enjoying our adventure. We can't wait to hear what happens next.